Hey guys, so I don't know if I've shown this clip before, but so the backstory behind it is this is a mall in Mexico, and apparently during a thunderstorm, the roof started to leak. Um, and this this uh, particular mall has a band. I don't know if it's a regular band, you know, that will play or whatever the case, but. Uh, <laughs> I would be crying from laughter if this happened, if I was in the mall and this happened, because the moment is so perfect for this. So you have all these people standing around watching the ceiling leak. Um, you know, you got the person on the bottom with a, a bucket of something, you know, trying to, I guess, catch the water or something. I mean, it's not gonna do much, but in the most perfect, just one of those mwah, moments, uh, this band decides to play the most fitting song. Um, and you can tell by right in there. But um, here we go. So you can hear the people's reactions as it's going on. Um, you know, people are already standing around watching as the ceiling leaks copious amounts of uh, uh, of water. <laughs> but then, like I said, in just the spur of the moment, just perfection, the planets align, uh, and this band has the urge to play the most fitting song. Uh, Gentlemen, it's been a privilege to play with you tonight. I mean, you can't make this shit up. And that's, you know, this is something I would do. You know, I would, you know, I've been in some situations in life just out and about where something will happen and it just an uh, urge or uh, just the perfect song will pop into my head. And this is definitely one of those moments where if that was me, I would probably do the same thing, you know, because we're standing around in this place and got water falling in and places started to fill up a little bit. And the first thing I would think of is Titanic. But I mean, kudos to the freaking people on stage who just instantly just, hey, let's start playing this. Um. And even the comments, um, just this band deserves a raise. It looked like once the music started, the people stopped panicking. <laughs> Jack, don't go. Sorry, but Spencer's gift closes in not 10 minutes. Very sad to see a lot of people die. Gentlemen, it has been a privilege playing with you today. Canada mall, like me on me in America. I still like Canada. Did anyone ever find what uh, where this happened? I think it's yeah. Uh, Plaza Patria, a mall in oh, okay. Uh, moving over a river. It was I don't know. So it always floods during rainy seasons. Okay. Guadalajara, Mexico. Genius. <laughs> it's all fun and games till the ball starts sinking. 
Greetings to you all, shoppers. Greeting to all of you, shoppers. The mall will be closing in 10 minutes. Please proceed to the nearest light boat. Thank you for shopping with us. It's been a privilege fight with you tonight. The grand staircase be like. The only thing that would make this better is if everyone was laughing or started singing. Only in Mexico. Funking awesome. Gentlemen, it's been an honor. We kept playing until the end. No, that wasn't a saxophone, that was a clarinet. A clarinet. <laughs> Meeting time, exactly. Exactly. Lads probably knew they will sing together with the mall. <laughs> <laughs> I want a full cover version from my this band. But why did he stop recording? Rebirth of the band members who played on Titanic. I know, it's just, they're reincarnations. They just saw this opportunity and just, like, it clicked. <laughs> Legends say the mall is now in the Atlantic. To the Titanic. The ship is sinking. I think this is just a stupid mall flooding. How about all those people that died on the Titanic? And I still think Titanic will, will and always be the greatest ship ever. I mean, back in the day, I mean, it was a huge, like, a monumental occasion. You know, having a, a liner that big, one that said, oh yeah, this will never sink, and then it sunk. Oh, the irony. But yeah, back then, 1912, that was huge, you know? They've been waiting for this moment their whole career. How does a mall flood? Same way as everything else. Gentlemen, it's been an honor shopping with you. Should I smile or be concerned? I would jump into water and roll around. <laughs> Jack, draw me like one of your shopping girls. Another plot twist. Those were the great grandchildren. Your great grandpa was part of the original band in 1912. <laughs> What was this? Oh, there's a okay plot twist. They're in the Titanic. They're in the Titanic, but are secretly hiding, hiding it, and that they built uh, built Titanic again. There was a D deck. I mean, you would think so. The Titanic was fucking enormous. Uh, fact: the musicians on the Titanic kept playing until the very last moment, minute uh, when the boat sank. <laughs> what the fuck? How old is this video? There's a Radio Shack at 31. I thought those all died a horrible death. <laughs> Radio Shack died a horrible death, just like the people on the Titanic. No, I mean, this is Mexico, and I know U.S. and the U.S. Uh, Radio Shacks are pretty much non -existent. I mean, I don't know. I... I'm pretty sure in our malls, there's no Radio Shack anymore. Uh, what about your guys' malls? Do you guys still have Radio Shack? Um, it used to be big back in the day. Like, I remember going to Radio Shack all the time when I was a kid in the 90s. But, um, yeah. Then they all just kind of went extinct because there was really no need for them. Um, especially when it was pretty easy to buy electronics and all that online. Yeah, there's a, like, Funko Land, you guys, if you guys remember Funko Land. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you remember Funko Land, you know you're old. Um, our Funko, I think we had two Funko Lands. There was one Funko Land by, um, Toys R Us, and then there was another one in town, like, in our, you know, closer by, by Chuck E. Cheese. Um, 
Oh, God, I remember going there and getting Pokemon cards. I remember we got... I still have the card. Um, actually, let me see. I believe it is Eric. I think it was Erica's Dragonair, I believe. I believe it's a holographic, too. Yep. Here we go. From, uh, it's either Hero Challenger, um, Gym Heroes or Heroes, um, one of the gym ones. But, um, yeah, I remember that getting that at Funko, Funko Land. Absolutely gorgeous card. Japanese. But, um, yeah, I remember we went to Funko Land and we bought a pack of, like I said, it was either Gym Heroes or Gym Challenge. Uh, and, um, that gorgeous, we got that gorgeous card out of it. <laughs> but um yeah Funko Land it was a pretty small store I also remember games at the um at Toys R Us there's like when you walked in the door there was like this little part on the side where there was games and stuff um I also remember going to uh Toys R Us around the time that Ocarina of Time was released and I remember playing it on one of the, you know, things there. And I was like so confused because I was so used to being able to jump in games, but it had it, it had you in Hyrule, um, Hyrule Market. And I just stood there for a few minutes running around trying to figure out, I'm like, why can't I jump? So I was so confused. I'm like, why can't I jump? Because before that, I had been, you know, I played Mario 64 and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, you can jump there. I'm like, am I, am I pressing the wrong button? I'm like, what's the, and then you realize that, hey, auto jumps. Um, I miss Toys R Us. I miss Funko Land. I miss Chuck E. Cheese. I miss all those places. Went to his kids. Um, also, uh, Discovery Zone. You guys remember that place? That place was cool. Not as cool as, like, Chuck E. Cheese. Well, Chuck E. Cheese was more, you know, arcade game-based. But uh, Discovery Zone, DZ, was more like, you know, it had this giant... Like, it was this huge building, and it just had... You know, it had games and stuff, but then it also had, like, this giant play area just tubes going all over the place and slides and this is so fun we only went there like once or twice because it was pretty expensive for the time um actually does dz still exist hang on i'm curious apparently they haven't been in business for some time said by december 2001 the remaining 205 locations in 39 states canada and puerto rico shut down and Discovery Zone went out of business completely. That's a shame, man. But, I mean, when you had contenders and competitors like Chuck E. Cheese, you, you can understand why it went out of business. Um, founded in 1990, Discovery Zone grew quickly, opening 15 stores in, in 18 months. Wow. In April 1993, Blockbuster Video. Now, Blockbuster Video, for people who are too young, uh, was a place where you could go to rent VHSs, which were cassette tapes, you know, that you had uh, movies on, and then you put that into a VCR. Uh, and this VCR was a device that played uh, the contents of said tape. Um, now, they don't have the... I mean, some people actually still use VHSs. Um, even new movies you can find on VHS. Uh, same thing with records. You can find newer music on records because people love the whole, you know, the feel of, you know, putting the record on. <clears throat> so they're still making, like, VHSs today. Um, 
but uh, strict sin by expansions, changes in management tried to save the company. However, Discovery Zone filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on March 26, 1996 in Wilmington, Delaware. Wow, with debts up to $366.8 million. <clears throat> wow. On June 30th, 1999, Discovery Zone abruptly closed half of their locations and weren't able to alert those with reserved parties. Oh, man. Imagine you're going there for your fucking birthday only to find that the place has been shut down. 13 locations were sold to CEC Entertainment Inc., owner of Chuck E. Cheese, who attempted to accommodate last-minute parties rescheduling over the following days. Well, that's nice of them, though. It's like, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry about all that, but hey, uh, you can still have it here. Um, you guys the, remember the commercials... Uh, 1993. Ready swing here. I don't think so. <laughs> Climb and slide here. I don't think so. I can cut loose and be on my own. DZ's made just for me. A place where I can really cut loose. It's all here. Jump and tumble here. I don't think so. nostalgia and i remember seeing that slide with the rollers i remember i'm like i want to go down that so badly and i did i'm like okay this is really really fun yeah it was so fun and honestly if you just want to stay on that slide and just like probably be real great uh massager on your back bankrupt a day in the life of Southgate DZ, Jesus. The complete Discovery Zone birthday party experience. Seizure warning. Wow. I shall see if there's anything for... Funko Land. Yeah, if you guys, right there. It was like, a, it was very, it's very nostalgic looking at it. Um, yeah, they had multicolored, um, letters. I mean, the only thing that's still around from those days really is Chuck E. Cheese, I think. But it didn't Chuck E. Cheese... Hang on. All right, so, <clears throat> look up Chuck E. Cheese. Um, this is about buyout and modern redesign. Um international expansion so we've got a chuck e cheese um uh, defunct title chuck e cheese boulevard uh marina in vina del mar chile chuck e cheese is mall plaza and true uh tree sorry so fucking small peru it's in peru <laughs> Uh, financial trouble. The COVID-19 pandemic had been, has been financially damaging to the parent company and with an estimated one to two billion, oh my God, two billion in debt. The possibility exists of all CEC properties being forced to close if bankruptcy financing fails. <clears throat> CEC Entertainment solicited 200 million loans 
to finance a re, uh, restructuring under bankruptcy uh, bankruptcy protection. <clears throat> they also filed a voluntary petition under Chapter 11 of the Bankruptcy Code in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of Texas on June 25th to 2020. The elimination of animatronics. Huh. In July 2012, the long-standing rat mascot was rebranded, changing to a slimmer rock star mouse who played electric guitar, voiced by Duncan Brennan, who for 19 years has characterized Chuck E. Cheese as a wise cracking rat from New Jersey, was replaced with Jared Dra Jarrett Reddick, the front man and guitarist. Oh, Bowling for Soup. Fancy that. But why does this one's name sound familiar? Um. Oh. Dragon Ball Z. Sato. Huh. Bobby. Monster Carrot. Oh, wow. So. Who else? Dragon Ball GT. Kitty Grade. Samurai 7. Evangelion. Soul Eater. Such a great anime. Tenchi Muyo. Trigon. Full Metal Alchemist. I think I remember seeing this guy in a, um, like a behind the scenes thing for, uh, Dragon Ball film. Ah, eh, Barney. <laughs> Barney and friends. Video games. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Huh. Interesting. Food. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember when we'd go to Chuck E. Cheese, uh, there were times where we're waiting and the salad bar was like right there and we would just turn around and just like... Um, and also there was a thing with the pizza. I think it was um, the Shane Dawson started the whole controversy about it, about how um, Chuck E. Cheese pizzas looked like they were recycling pieces. Um, because the pieces would come out all wonky, like some pieces, like one there's one piece, and then another would be like that much, you know, longer. Um, <clears throat> but Mad Pat, with his channel Food Theory, got to the bottom of it, and it turns out it's weirded out because like the, the pieces ended up long weird shapes because the pizza cutter they use it's one of the you know rock ones, but it's not sharp. So you have to remember, these pizzas are coming straight out of the oven. They're still hot, which means they're still kind of able to be molding. And they're using a, a cutter that isn't sharp at all. So they have to keep, like, you know, moving it all around. And so it's going to force things higher or lower. Or, you know, I mean, you're looking down at the pizza, so it's going to stretch things out. And, you know, some of the pepperoni will get stuck under and... So there's no foul play of uh, recycling pieces. Um, it was just the fact they used this special cutter for safety reasons, but this very cutter is making it harder for them to do their jobs because it's not sharp enough to actually cut through the pizza, even when it's fresh out of the oven and soft. So they've got to like put effort into it and they're <laughs> manhandling it essentially. Um, but, uh, yeah. So it's interesting. If uh, you want to watch that, just go to uh, Food Theory. Uh, I think from like last year or something. I watched it. It was pretty good. You know, I, I like Mac Packs, so. Not too much of the Food Theory stuff, but I do like. Actually, uh, Food Theory. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, from a year ago. Food theory, Chuck E. Cheese pizza, should you be scared? 
16 minutes, pretty short. But yeah, it basically just comes down to the cutter that they have to use. Um, it's just not sharp enough. And they're manhandling the pizza trying to cut it. And I completely understand. Even with some modern, sharp, um, you know, pizza cutters, you still have to back and forth because it just doesn't cut through all the way. Um, hell, I was over at my friend's house the other day and I ordered pizza from Pizza Hut and they didn't like the pizza looked like it was cut like you could see like where they started but then I would try to pull it and it was just not pulling and I remember I had to sit there and try to you know line it and cut it and it was still fresh you know it was still piping hot so it's still soft and the more you do that the more it like stretches things out and you know mains it you know if if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to end up looking like a freaking crime scene. Sauce is going to be everywhere. It's like, who bled all over the place? And that's not blood, that's sauce. Like, what did you do to it? I tried cutting it. But, um, yeah, the freaking, freaking 90s, man. What's your favorite memory of the 90s? Like I said, I remember you know, Funko Land and stuff like that. You know, I showed you a card. I still have all the cards, but that was definitely memorable. The, um, the Dragonair card, gorgeous card. Um, there's still also, I said this, I think I've talked about this, but there is, uh, like these little flea market type store or little outlet stores and everything. And they were, have they sold, uh, they were selling Pokemon, uh, like, box, you know, like the um, structure decks or whatever. And there, I believe, was an Amphros and a Zoomeroll. And same thing, I still have those cards. And these are from, what, 1998, 1999. Um, I remember because our dad, my dad got us both packs. Actually... Let me see. What condition are they in? All right, I assume we're all where. All right. So I think there's yeah, both of them. So not only is one Japanese from that pack, but as you can see, first edition is Zoomerol. or um Amphros for there, and is Zoomerol? Let's see, we're going out, baby. Nope. But, um... You can see one, one Japanese, one not. Uh... Same thing with, uh... First edition. Um, Ganium, so let's see, what about, yep, got both Japanese and English for type collusion, and for alligator, come on, bud. Nope. Unfortunately, I just have a, uh, Japanese for alligator, unfortunately. Uh, Quilava and Cyndaquil, my boy. Which one was this? Yeah, it's one of those promo cards. It's really cool looking, uh, promo Pichu. It's really cool looking. Talking about nostalgic stuff, and then here I am showing off my Pokemons. Let me show them to you. Yeah, I still have my Entei card from when I went to go see the movie. And, um, where is it? <laughs> yeah. One of, 
one of the best, if not the best, in the set. It's a little damaged. Holographic Jolteon for jungle. And then, of course, my Pride and Joy, which, well, oh, for back then it was. Same thing. First edition flare, holographic Flareon. I got that when I got that card, I was so fucking happy. I love Flareon. Got Misty's ten holographic Tenacruel. I have a lot of cool cards that are just like, you know, behind the other ones. Um, one of my cool, my, one of my favorites, the fact is holographic Venusaur, both original Japanese. Yeah. Original Charizard. I mean, I was huge collector. But, um... But, uh, yeah. Anyways, 31 minutes. Goddamn. Where has all the time gone? Uh, yeah. But let me know your favorite, most fond memories of the 90s. Um... Yeah, let me know below. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.